Good evening. Thank you for joining us on Restore with Connection Health. My name is Booker T. Taylor III, and I'm a clinical dietitian at Brookwood Medical Center. I'll be sharing with you today ways that you can eat healthy during the holidays. You will have an opportunity to ask questions. Please use the raise hand or type in the chat. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about Restore with Connection Health. If you haven't already joined this group, please do. Through this group, you're able to learn great tips on healthier eating, exercise techniques, and overall ways to help you gain knowledge to become a healthier you and restore with connection health. Restore your mindset, educate yourself on healthier routines, stay consistent, thrive, overcome obstacles, refresh your inner self, excel in a new way of living. So let me get started. You can just go to the uh, next slide. Yes, sir. Okay, now. Awesome. So here's a list of objectives that I want to get accomplished through this uh, PowerPoint. So I want to raise awareness through the challenges, about the challenges of maintaining a healthy diet during the holiday season, offer practical tips on preparing healthy alternatives, define mindful eating and provide strategies incorporating mindfulness into holiday meals, snacks, and alcohol. Offer practical tips for controlling portion sizes when I feel deprived. Advocate on seeking support from friends and family and making healthy choices. Educate on the impact of alcohol on calorie intake and alcohol moderation. And offer practical tips for managing stress eating. You can go to the next slide. So right here, before we get into healthy eating tips for the holidays, here's some general basic guidelines I just have for eating in general. So throughout January, February, all the way to December. So here's a list that I updated while I was at my rotation with Cooper Green, one of my favorite preceptors, Miss Ann Hurd Nesbitt. She's amazing. Um, so we, as we go to the top of this list, we hand it out to all the diabetic patients, but this is something that everybody can use. I know I can use it myself. I, I try, I always use it. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> uh, so don't, do not skip meals. Eat something at mealtime. It's always important to always consistently eat meals or eat something at mealtime just because of your metabolism. If you skip meals, it's just going to have your metabolism going all the way down. As soon as you eat something, it's going to go right back up. And that's just not good for your metabolism, not good for your body, especially if you have diabetes or anything like that. So you always want to eat something at mealtime. You don't have to have a full course meal. You don't have to have, you know, all the works. But some, just eat something, even if it's just a little healthy snack. That's It will be helpful. And with that, you also want to at least drink at least three to four bottles of water every day, every day. Sometimes we have that sense of like we're hungry and sometimes we just need something to drink. Sometimes you need water to drink and just staying hydrated is important just so you can just stay energized throughout the day and get tasks done, especially if you work out. And next thing is I'll eat fresh fruit at least twice a day and with vegetables eat at least once, twice a day. Food and vegetables just have things that we just can't replace, that, that we can't get it from other food sources. We can, but it's just best when it comes just from, you know, fruits and veggies. When it comes to eating out now, as I continue on with this, I'm not trying to, I do not, most dietitians and most nutrition experts, we don't want to push a diet on you. We don't want to, you know, tell you to, hey, don't ever, ever, ever go to another fast food spot. Don't go to McDonald's. No, sometimes you would like to go to McDonald's sometimes you like that so I want to meet you where you're at so I'll say this if you ever go to a McDonald's or a Chick-fil-A or anything try to get the kids meal or just get the the sandwich you know just get the tenders or just get the burger or the sandwich it just helps because at the end of the day you don't eat what's in front of you I know me if I pay for it I'm gonna eat it <laughs> that is that is how I operate so I don't want to throw away money right? so so and sometimes too just getting the kids meal or just getting the the main course to the combo is just that's enough food right there to get get you by besides if you get the whole thing that's going to just be extra calories extra fat you know stuff that you really don't need and when it comes to beverages with sugar try not to drink those you know it's i won't believe it. like you won't believe it. all the times that i've in my rotation or even at my work you know so many people came to me and was like hey i lost so much weight just by dr stop drinking sodas so just stop, stop drinking Coca-Cola, all this stuff, like, and it works. So always go for, try to go for, like, the zero calorie stuff. It's so easy, too. Like, they didn't have to change anything else. If they just drop just the sodas, and they drop so much weight. 
like you won't believe it. So if you can get something like zero calorie, you know, Coke Zero, um, all these Mountain Dew Zero, all that type of stuff. And even if you don't like that, you know, I'm going to talk, talk about it earlier. You can get those little mixers, those low calorie mixers, which you can put in your water. Sometimes you really just don't need a soda, you know, but if you want a soda, get you a diet, get some of that. So that would be awesome. And also too, try to move about 15, 20 minutes a day. You know, if you're watching TV, move during commercials, just something just to get the heart rate up. That's just, that's very important. So you can go to the next slide. So now to holiday eating. So I know when it's holiday season for me, it's just life gets hectic. <laughs> I didn't know that I got to get gifts. It gets busy around work. If you work retail, it's crazy. If you work in health, it's crazier. Like you're going to be moving around. So it's just always best to plan ahead, plan ahead, plan meals, plan snacks in advance. Sometimes if you're not a person that likes to meal prep or you just don't see yourself meal prepping, sometimes if you just make a big dish that you can just eat on throughout the week, that'll be great. So you can make some chili, make some spaghetti, make a stew or something like that. That That's a good way to meal prep. People don't think about it like that. Some people always think of meal prepping. It's like I get these five containers of just this chicken breast, this broccoli, this like, nah. Sometimes if you just get a big bowl or something, that's, that's meal prepping. You just meal prep. You did a great job. You've been doing it too, so. That's one thing doing it. So plan ahead, account for the days where you're traveling, account for holiday errands because you're going to be busy. And you Sometimes we always tend to just go just eat fast food all the time because we're just always on the go. Well, if you plan ahead, you know, bring you a snack or something like that, that'll always be great. And, you know, also plan for your, your busy days. Like I said, you work retail, you work in health, you're just going to have a hectic schedule that's going to throw you off the whack. And once time you're, when you're throwing off that routine, you're just going to eat anything in sight. You're going to have mindless eating. We're going to talk about we're going to cover that more later. So I was just plan ahead for those days. So we can go to the next slide. So portion control. Portion size is crucial for maintaining a healthy diet without feeling deprived. It's so important. So here's some practical tips just so you won't overeat or just eat more than you should. So use smaller plates, bowls, sometimes that just helps. Use your hand as a guide. So when it comes to protein, when it comes to meat, sometimes the accurate, you know, the recommended amount of that protein is just about the size of your palm, you know, thickness of it as well, you know. Um, avoid eating straight from the package, you know. Please, 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 please. Your mama raised you good. Your mama raised you right. My mama raised me right. You know, she told me do not eat the ice cream out the big container. Don't eat the chips out the big bag. Just take those chips, take take those foods, put it in a small serving. So we, we've been doing this a while. So don't think it's just anything foreign. Sometimes if you just take it out and just put it in like a small cup or small bag, and it will help you portion things out right so you won't overeat. And also, again, stay hydrated. It just helps you just feel you know fuller. And also, too, like there's times where you're just going to feel hungry, but all you really need is just a bottle of water, a cup of water, just to help you stay hydrated. It's just, that always helps. We go to the next slide. So speaking about portions, over the years, nutrition experts have advanced from the food pyramid to my plate. So y'all remember the food pyramid. I remember it, seeing it when I was in kindergarten or when fourth grade, just having it on my wall and stuff like that. So they moved away from that and went to a more practical model when it comes to my plate. So my plate is a visual reminder to make healthy choices from each of the five groups. And those five groups are proteins, vegetables, fruit, grains, and dairies. So that's just the best way to get all the nutrients that's just out there. So I want to interact with y'all. I want to hear what y'all have to say. So how can we incorporate like this plate? Like what are items that, typical items that we eat? That we can, you know, that's typical holidays. It's like Thanksgiving around the corner. I know it snuck, snuck up on me. I don't know if it snuck up on y'all. <laughs> so what are some food, typical food Thanksgiving items that we could put in the you know, protein section, the, the grain section, the veggie section? Like, what are those? Please feel free to raise this, your hand. This, Deborah, I like the turkey. I like the sliced turkey. Sliced turkey. Okay. I like I like turkey, too. I like turkey, too. I like them fried. Fan recently fried them. I like that. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? 
So somebody in the chat put turkey and ham. Okay. Yeah. I'm How do you feel it. about eating those two meats though? Like, is that too it's, much? It's okay. Oh, it's perfectly fine. Like I would say, don't overdo it, of course. But again, you can use your hands, like use the palm of your hand. And sometimes I know my family, we cut them thin. So if you, <laughs> you know, we kind of like, just, we kill it like real thin, like them slice. So if you want to get like one slice, two slices of turkey, two slices of the ham, that's fine. As long as it just takes up that one fourth of that plate, you know. And as you see here, I, I'm sorry, I didn't even describe it. So you want half your plate as you see here. Oh, I see someone say grilled chicken, like some grilled chicken. I, I'm actually, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm I'm always going to pick chicken over turkey and ham. I know, you know, don't shoot, don't shoot the messenger, but that's just me. That's just, that's just me. But you want half your plate to be fruits and vegetables. You want one fourth to be protein, and you want one fourth to be grains. So I know when I already imagine my Thanksgiving plate. I already know I'm about to get a little ham. I'm more of a ham person. Like I said, if someone got some fried turkey, I'll, I'll put that there too. But I'll just get one fourth of that for my plate just to have. And I might do some small portions, but I'll just grab me a, some slices of ham. I love dressing, so I get that for the other one fourth piece, and then have I love turnip greens, love turnip greens. So I'll, I'll just get a little bit of that too. And please don't be afraid. Don't you know? I know it's been a trend. I know as a guy, and I know y'all have you know. I know y'all have male family members, especially the young ones. When I was young, I'm like, man, I'm gonna stuff my plate. Don't do that. <laughs> please don't follow your trend. You know, the food's gonna be there. The food's gonna be there. Just get you small portions and work your way up. Mindful eating is so important, so important. So we can go to the next slide. So thank y'all for that. Thank y'all for interacting with that. Oh, just about to talk about it. Mindful eating. So mindful eating is when you focus on eating experience, body-related sensations and thoughts and feelings about food with heightened awareness without judgment. So actually taking your time, chewing, eating is the benefits like you savor each bite, you actually get to enjoy your meal. You actually get to enjoy it. You know, sometimes you may even feel like a nice little food critic. You can actually, you know, taste the food and you can judge the food, you know, by, you know, savoring each bite and enjoy it, not just scarfing it down. You can also recognize your fullness through. So taking those pauses in between eating, you can really understand like how full you get. You know, you don't have to just clean your plate I know sometimes that's something that my family, we grew up with where, you know, you got to clean your plate. Like, don't leave that table until you, you know, clean your plate. You know, and sometimes when it comes to mindless eating, you just want to just clean the plate. But actually take pauses, eat your food, and you get to fully enjoy your food when you do that. So ways to practice it, of course, limit mindless distractions. Now, I, I, I enjoy a nice TV while I'm eating. I enjoy some good TV. I enjoy a nice YouTube video while I eat. But don't let it, if you know it's a series you dying to watch or it's very eventful, put it on hold. You're going to watch it anyway. Don't eat it while you're eating it because you're going to be in there. You're going to be like, oh, ain't no way she did that. I can't believe him. Oh, you're just going to let it. So try to limit mindless distractions. You know, even with people kind of helps too. Um, pause in between bites. Take your time chilling. So that's ways you can be more mindful about eating. You go to the next slide. So, speak about mindfulness, you got to stay mindful with the alcohol. Now, again, just like food, just like eating out, I do not want to stop y'all from drinking alcohol. I don't want to stop y'all from eating, you know, fast food. I don't want to stop that. But what I am asking you to do is just please be mindful of it. Because each drink contains approximately about 100 to 150 empty calories. And what I mean by empty calories is there's no other nutrients coming with that. So you want to get nutrient-dense food, nutrient-dense drink, stuff that if you're going to eat those calories, at least have some other nutrients in with it. So, and, you know, just a, just a fact right here, your body treats alcohol as fat. So converting alcohol sugars into fatty acids, alcohol use, alcohol use inhibits absorption of nutrients. So that's something we already know. But again, I'm not trying to stop you from drinking alcohol. Just, just be more mindful of it. You know, so set stopping times or limits in advance. You know, sometimes we can even make mocktails. Mocktails are fun. <laughs> and alternate with water. <laughs> alternate with water. You, you have to do that anyway. You have to stay hydrated anyway. So might as well alternate with water. 
And sometimes you can just opt for a lower uh, alcohol content. So that's one thing you do. Just all, all things you can do when it comes to staying mindful of alcohol. So we can go to the next slide. So smart substitutions. So making healthy ingredient substitutions in traditional holiday recipes or complementary foods can help reduce calorie or fat content while maintaining delicious flavors. Now, again, I don't want you to mess up a family tradition, a family staple. Because some recipes, if you do change, let's be honest, some recipes, if you do change certain ingredients, it's not going to taste as well. You know, especially like when you're making cake and you use or oil instead of a butter, it's going to be a little dry, something like that. Like, I, I don't want you kicked out of your house. <laughs> I don't want you to be banned from bringing the, bringing the you know, the family staple. I don't want that for you. But however, some complimentary foods you can replace and we can, you know, lower the sugar intake that you have or the fat intake that you have. So, like I said earlier, regular sodas, place them with diet sodas. You know, sometimes like sodas ain't the most important thing when it comes to a Thanksgiving meal or when it comes to a family meal that you're eating. So you can replace with diet sodas. So juices, the sugar-free mixers, um, like milk chocolate. So this even applies to treats. You know, you like milk chocolate, you use milk chocolate for anything. You can use dark chocolate. Dark chocolate has a lot of um, antioxidants with it. And it's just a healthier option. And if it's some recipes that you feel like you can't replace certain ingredients with, you can use olive oil or avocado oil or use a low sodium broth. So it's anybody that I'm going to, you know, this is something that I feel like very important. So I'm going to ask y'all because this is something that we can all benefit from. So is there any other suggestions or there, is there any other replacements that you have done um, for holidays that are you do around that? healthier substitutions that you make? Anybody? Feel free to raise your hand up and check. Is there any healthy substitutions that you already do? I've always used, since I started making greens like five years ago, um, I use smoked turkey necks instead of, but my grandmother, my big mama used to use pork and I don't eat pork. So when I start trying to you know, make greens like five years ago, I always use uh, smoked turkey instead of, you know, a fattier meat. So, I mean, it tastes great and I like it. And I do use, when I use uh, chicken broth, I use low sodium chicken broth. Awesome. Awesome. Does anybody else, don't don't share free game. I mean, I mean, don't keep the free game. Share free game. <laughs> That's how we say it. Any other tips that anybody use that your family use or anything like that? We'll give you some time. I know people type last time. So. Well, <clears throat> um, I started using uh, Mrs. Dash for seasoning um, to alleviate salt um, altogether. And um, even in my broth, um, instead of buying already made broth, I use the broth that comes off my chicken or my turkey or whatever and use it to seasoning like whatever else I need it for. Awesome. That's great. I like that. I like that. My my yeah. mom makes a dessert, it's pistachio salad. Um, I think Johnny, my sister, is on the phone. Um, I know she uses everything that she puts in there is sugar free. Um, and it tastes really, really good. And you really wonder like, you sure this doesn't have any sugar? So she used healthier items um in order to to make it taste great. And, and and what you use to make that? Can 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 you? Is that, is that a family secret? You don't got you don't got to tell me. You don't got to tell me. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> you don't got to tell me. You don't got to tell me. You, 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 just 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 mention me properly. Just mention me properly. I did figure out what she put in macaroni and cheese, but I can't tell it. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. See, we ain't trying to do that. I ain't trying to get kicked out again. This is being recorded. Y'all saw it. I don't want y'all. It's, it's sugar free, um, pistachio pudding. Um, fat free Cool Whip. Um, the pistachio nuts, and I can't remember what else. You remember, Deborah? I'm not the cook in the family, Johnny. You are. (laughs) (laughs) 
but I'm not sure what else, but I know everything is um fat free and sugar free. Yeah, that's awesome. Like uh, I like that. I like that. Yes. Now, Miss Johnny, did you have what how does your family react when you I know when you served it to them, you didn't tell them, but after they ate it and you said, Hey y'all, all everything I made is fat free, did they believe you? Mama well, makes our it. mom our mom Johnny makes don't do it. it. Oh, I, I don't. Our Wait, mom to it. <laughs> Our mom makes it. We eat it. It's good. Okay, your mom. <laughs> awesome, awesome. We can go to the next slide. So I'm glad she actually brought. I'm glad y'all actually brought that up because that's actually pertains to my next slide. So do not be afraid to seek support from family or friends. I, now, I can't speak for everyone's family or social dynamics, but if applicable, please don't be afraid to do so. You never know what your high, you never know the effect of what, what community has in your in your life until you know they start making changes or certain changes are made. So with your family, you can have an accountability partner. You can just have someone there to be like, hey, sis, or your cousin, your favorite cousin, your siblings, you'd be like, hey, we're right here. I ain't eating this. <laughs> you not eating this, and we and we're, we're right here. It can be that, or it can just be encouragement. You know, I know most people in our family. Some people in our family, we we kind of look to for encouragement. You know, they're, they're always just they're bright. They're saying you can be that person, and you know how you know, or you can be the person that just or is really close to the person in your family that provides that encouragement. And it's very important. You know, you, like when they say, "Hey, if you're doing a great job, are you doing this? It feels good." You know. So you can be that person or someone can be that person for you. So again, also too, they can also just food items. So I'm gonna brag on my family members. So my cousin, one of my oldest cousins, he's really good at baking, really good at baking. I'm low key jealous. <laughs> I ain't gonna say I'm jealous, but, but <laughs> he's he's really nice at baking. He's really good at baking. And you know, some of my family are health conscious, you know, when it comes to cakes and stuff like that, they don't want too much of the icing on it. So he makes a nice red velvet cake with all, all that extra icing. And it's really good. It's really good. I will <laughs> I will plug him, but I'm on him by using social media. But <laughs> so I, I but also too, I don't want to flood it because he said he's done with thank he's done with Thanksgiving orders. It might be Christmas orders. So I'll let y'all know. Just hit me up and I, I'll give y'all the link. But however, yes. He makes this amazing red velvet cake without all the icing. So you may have someone in your family that could, you know, be there for you. They can make something, make an adjustment. If you just tell them, you know, don't so don't be afraid. If you just tell them and be like, hey, you know, I'm kind of, I know you typically make this. Could you do something for this and make it for me? Like that would definitely help. And also, some people, if you just let them know, if you let your family know, they can probably provide, you know, some certain foods for you, you know, instead of just making just this one batch for everybody they could make adjustments for you so and that can make a world of difference that can really encourage you and keep you going on your you know healthy journey so please don't be afraid to talk to your family don't be afraid to seek help from your family they can provide a huge impact and speaking of my family next slide Stress. I'm just, I'm just playing. Again, I'm just playing. <laughs> I like to have fun with this. But stress management is very important when it comes to this. So we all hear about it, the holiday blues, or because of how busy work gets or how busy you have to find presents or decorate or all this stuff. Sometimes they can add some unnecessary stress. And unnecessary stress can have a lot of negative impacts when it comes to eating. Emotional eating purposes of like high palatable food so basically because you're you know you're sad or you're going through something you're just trying to get you know let me just get some comfort food let me just get some comfort food let me just get my my my, my big mac with num you know let me get my number five let me let me get by half the cake over here like so that's something that happens or also something we said earlier mindless eating because you're such in a rush to get the next thing going or you don't sit down and, and breathe, you're in the next room, you're just going to eat just to get to the next task. You're like, oh, I'm hungry. All right, let me eat. And now you just try to hurry up and eat. And again, you're not being mindful of what you're eating or your full excuse. So some strategies for managing stress. So again, establish regular eating patterns. 
if you keep the same eating patterns, you're not going to get out of whack and plan ahead. So identify triggers too. No, it's not identify the triggers that cause you to go on those spells of overeating or going for the snacks. Like, pay attention to that. Try to avoid it if you can. But if you can't, just be aware of it. Stay hydrated too. Again, say it's over and over again. If you don't take nothing else, please stay hydrated. But take some other stuff, but stay hydrated. It really does make a difference when it comes to right eating. Um, also to engage in stress reducing activities. If you're already seeking therapy, continue to do that. If you already have many ways of um, controlling your stress, continue to do that. Continue to do that and keep that in mind. So, and to our next slide, with that being said, do we have any questions, any questions? Ask away, you raise your hand, put some in the chat. Anybody? Well, if we do not have any questions, I hope you find this information helpful. We will host another session in two weeks. So again, if you haven't already joined this group, please do. Through this group, we're able to learn great tips on healthier eating, exercise techniques, and overall ways to help you gain knowledge and become a healthier you and restore weight connection health. My name is Booker. Thank you so much.